What am I doing over here? Uh, good question. I'll answer that when I feel like it. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies podcast, or for short, one and a half white guys. I'm Nick, your one white guy. And, and I'm Nathan, your half white guy. And for once, you're getting my good side, ladies and gentlemen. Nick, explain again, why am I over here? You couldn't care less about this movie. Uh, that That's true. Yeah. I love this movie. So you commissioned me to lead this episode. For, because This is a special what type of day? Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. Happy <laughs> April Fool's Day, everyone. <laughs> this is our April Fool's movie. We are doing Venom. Let there be that we are. Nick, have we done the movie Venom? There was a first one? I think you'll be glad that we didn't. Uh, okay. Because this one is not only mercifully shorter than that one, <laughs> but it's just better in my opinion. Okay. Why don't I get right into it? We are doing Venom Let There Be Carnage. Starring Handsome Bob as Eddie Brock slash Venom. Naomi Harris as basically a crackhead variant of her character from Pirates. Okay. And Woody Harrelson doing what he does best. He's doing like true detective Woody Harrelson, but like more fragmented and if all true, over the place. Yeah, if true detective Woody Harrelson was the one they were trying to catch. Yes. <laughs> Eddie Brock attempts to reignite his career by interviewing serial killer Cletus Cassidy, who becomes the host of the symbiote Carnage and escapes from prison after a failed execution. That's better put together than the movie was. Yeah, it's pretty much, <laughs> it's way better than the movie was. I, you know what? Why didn't they make this? <laughs> <laughs> when did you first see this? Well, you invited me to go see this <laughs> with you when it was in theaters I in did. 2021. And my favorite part about the showing was they had alcohol at the, at the <laughs> theater, which I partook in heavily because I go, oh, my Lord, what am I watching? Because I, I do want to be clear. Sony's like weird split off of all the Spider-Man villains, but not Spider-Man in them has never interested me. I never once asked, what would it be like if we got backstory on some of these characters? I never once asked that. <laughs> Sony has two, yeah. two Spider-Man properties they have a hold of. Whatever this thing is and Spider-Verse. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think they're scared to put I think they're, you know, you know, it's funny. They were, they were all fun and games to bring in Tom Hardy to our, in a bonus scene into the universe that Tom Holland Spider-Man inhabits, but they will not do a full, full connection besides a little, uh, Easter egg in Spider-Verse 2 to existing, like the, <laughs> the, 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 the spider, Spider-Man Spider-Verse into the Spider-Man list spider uh villain verse i guess yeah <laughs> we'll I call guess. it that he came and it was me him and a group of friends of mine i had such a good time watching this i was floored at how much i enjoyed this movie i liked the first venom i had a fun time with it i was really excited for this especially for woody harrelson to come on yeah this movie's no good <laughs> i really kind of fell in love with this movie yeah yeah it's definitely it has its charms I would say for sure. All right. Is that the nicest thing you're going to say it, about it? It, it, it <laughs> I will say this. The movie is fully aware of what it is. It knows what it is from the beginning. It doesn't pretend to be anything else. Andy Serkis, of all people, directed this. Gollum, Gollum himself. himself. The cinematography yeah. done by, guess who? Robert Richardson. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Who shot movies like Casino and uh, quite a number of Tarantino movies. Yeah. He and Andy Serkis, who directed this, they're good friends and they worked together before. Yes. Like Andy Serkis, this isn't his first directing gig. I'll just come out right and say it. This movie's fairly storyless. I want to say it just kind of yeah. is like this happens, this happens, and it all leads to one thing. And that's just big bang, boom fight at the end. Yes. That's that's what it is low effort old school superhero yeah. storyline to it yeah whereas there's a hero and a carbon copy of the hero who's the bad guy and they just have to come together to fight at the end it's i can see why people are calling this this harkens back to like the superhero movies of like the 90s and the 2000s essentially oh is it is it just because it's followed like the same style and kind of just the, the tropes themselves not yeah the, not just the tropes but the general like campiness of it all too. yeah <laughs> it's very much in the lines of like what iron man and it's kind of like this right 
Yeah, but Iron Man had a lot more on its mind. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, the first Incredible Hulk, uh, the the one with um, Ed Norton. Ed Norton ends like this. Very much so. Yes. Yes. Cletus Cassidy is a serial killer played by Woody Harrelson, and he is from the Spider-Man comics. Yes. Just like Eddie Brock slash Venom is. I want to ask you this. What do you think of the casting? Watching <laughs> Tom Hardy play Eddie Bo- Brock, uh, it, it's a little different than the comics. Eddie Brock's more of like a vengeful, jealous person all the time. And Tom Hardy just seems kind of like a disinterested fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's completely disinterested. He doesn't even seem like he cares about his job or anything. He should, I don't know what he cares about. I don't think anything. Maybe just the motorcycle. Yeah. That's the most emotion he shows in this movie. Yeah. When Venom Man. angry girlfriends his motorcycle. Yes. I actually was referring to Woody Harrelson as Cletus oh, Cassidy. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I think Woody Harrelson does a great job for doing whatever the fuck he really wants to on screen. <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. He is it Cletus Cassidy. Kind of. Not really. I, I think he just I think it's just Woody Harrelson doing some interesting stuff, uh, doing some interesting acting. So I'll, I'm just well, I'm waiting willing to let it go. I had fun with him in this. He's, he can play crazy person in his sleep, yes. obviously, and he's just, he's leaning way in, way into the whole calm, crazy kind of persona because... When I get out of here, there's gonna be carnage. The way he there's talks be carnage. in his first scene is like, like this, usually. Eddie, yeah. I missed you, Eddie, bro. It's just kind of like, okay, he's doing whatever he wants. He really is, yeah. is. But is that Cletus Cassidy from the comics? Like, is he or is he like toned down? I'm sure he's toned down. This movie's very PG-13, unfortunately. Well, Cletus Cassidy in the comics is a little bit more just full out psychopathic crazy. In later comics, he's like been fully lobotomized by uh, by Carnage, where he has to be connected to the symbiote or he's just like a dead body. Essentially, he, he doesn't move. Yeah, like that's the only thing. He only moves and has emotion as Carnage slash Cletus Cassidy when he's connected to the symbiote. You know what you're getting into. Sure. When the opening scene is this horrible dub of these two young actors portraying like young Cletus Cassidy and young Shriek, but they're dubbed by Naomi Harris and Woody Harrelson like really badly. (laughs) And also that scene is just horribly edited. It's like, oh, hello, Angel. I miss you. They're coming to take me away. (laughs) But but they can't. They're taking me away now. Bye. I love you. (laughs) No! (laughs) And then she tries to escape. She gets shot in the eye, but she lives. And gets transferred to Ravencroft, which is from the comics. And why, yes. And why is Naomi Harris in Ravencroft specifically? What does she have? She has supersonic screaming abilities. She's like Banshee from X-Men. Except, uh... She's called Shriek. Except she's called Shriek. So she's pretty much Banshee from X-Men. Shriek and (laughs) Cleus Cassidy, they are... are, They are a thing in the comics, right? Yes, yes. They have have some connections, yeah. Well, they lean heavily into that one. (laughs) They try to get married at the end of this. Yeah. I'm not (laughs) sure how far it goes in the comics. I just remember reading comics where they were together. Cletus Cassidy, played by Woody Harrelson, he's this notorious serial killer. He's locked up, and the only one he is okay to talk to or be interviewed by is Eddie Brock. As seen at the end of the first Venom, Eddie Brock gets like the scoop of his career or something. He goes and shows up, and there's Woody Harrelson in like this Ronald McDonald wig. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Playing Cletus Cassidy. He like, looks like <laughs> fucking Ice Spice <laughs> at, uh, it, coming in in the end. Venom and Eddie are still symbiotically connected. Yes. Like Venom still lives inside Eddie. There's this hothead cop played by uh, Stephen Graham. Yes. And he's, he's just kind of there along with like Michelle Williams and other side characters. Yeah. They're just kind of there. To- <laughs> they're there to support the story. This is, this is again, this, this police force SFPD in this movie is vying for number one, most incompetent uh, <laughs> that I've ever seen. And there's a lot of incompetent police forces in movies and especially horror movies. There's tons of incompetent police forces, but these guys, these guys are really up there. Okay. Who they're takes- almost as bad as the FBI in the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> the FBI in the Sopranos is incompetent as shit too. If we can, we get popular enough. We'll do a full breakdown of most incompetent police forces and most competent police forces. Basically <laughs> who's, most competent who actually does their job and who's most incompetent and pretty much just gives the killer another weapon. <laughs> oh, we had to let him go. Let him go. Let him go. <laughs> we have witnesses. Tom Hardy in this movie looks like he's constantly on the verge of a nervous breakdown. 
which is a good testament to his performance because if you had an alien constantly talking in your head, talking shit, and yeah. <laughs> saying everything, yeah, you would probably be a little tired too because Venom does not shut the fuck up in this and he sounds so wacky in this. In the first one, he mostly sounded monstrous. Yes. But in this one, he sounds like he's from Sesame Street. <laughs> you know? I'm right though, right? Venom ain't Big Bird. <laughs> He just talks the entire time, but he half of it is funny and half of it is just annoying. Annoying. It is. Yeah. And it's beyond. <laughs> he's just talking the entire time. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm looking like I'm talking to myself right now. It's Those he, are some of the funnier parts of the movie. He plays it. Where, yes. where he has to, play, where Venom's talking to him and he talks back, but he has to play it off yeah. like, <laughs> in front of other people. Because yeah. I think he's talking to them. Eddie goes to Cletus and Cletus Eddie doesn't get anything out of him. Like he just wants him. Like Cletus just wants just him to get around. Like <sighs> Cletus essentially wants him to get a note out to his girlfriend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> who he does, who may or may not be alive to him. But yeah, she is. She's being held. You know, held prisoner about in, uh, two miles away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, San Quentin's very, San, so very San, close so to Cletus this. So Cletus Cassidy's at San Quentin, which is right next to the Richmond Bridge, uh, kind of nearing the top of the North Bay mm -hmm. a little bit. So that's where Cletus Cassidy is. Ravencroft, I think, is somewhere in the East Bay or the <laughs> Peninsula or maybe the South Bay. I don't know, but you know what? Fuck it. It's about five minutes away by driving. It's it surrounded like. by a bunch of forest and trees. It looks like it could be in Moraga or something. Yeah, I, I don't know where it's supposed to be. In, in the comics, it's in New York. So maybe he drove all the way there and quickly <laughs> drove back the same night. I don't know. It is a little tedious at times. It feels like a lot of times play, uh, characters have to just drive or go somewhere else. <laughs> it's it's that. And there's a lot of lot of establishing shots of San Francisco in this movie to remind you where you are. Yeah. Some of the fun to have some of the fun we had watching this again was the fact that we are from San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we could tell what was obviously wrong and what was obviously even more wrong. Yes. I guess you could it's kind of like how in bullet, how he gets from, where is it? So the mission to, to the Marina in like a minute and you, or something oh. like that. We were like, he can't do that. No, I mean, I'm talking. Oh, I mean, I thought you were talking about the end of the chase where just suddenly he's like driving on the coast. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. that's also part of it. Yeah. Where he gets, <laughs> but essentially, you know, if you've seen bullet, you're, you're watching it and you go, that, he's in a completely different neighborhood now. <laughs> that's across the city. That's eight. That's like six miles away. Okay. That, the entire the entirety of this movie. <laughs> yes. Basically. Where are they going? And with just fake fucking places too. Yeah. Where but apparently are, where are, are all they? right next to San Francisco. Yes. I don't think they realize San Francisco is in a bay. Yeah. <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> apparently it's just connected to everything, even but though it's got bridges still. Pretty sure from the point where Venom goes to the rave to the mm -hmm. end of the movie. I'm confident that all takes place in one night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's on Halloween too. Yes. <laughs> this is a Halloween movie. Oh God. Yeah. Let's add it to our essentials. So the cops really want Eddie to try to get anything he can out of him. Yes. He doesn't. But Not at all. Venom in Eddie's head says, Hey, look at his cell. He has like carved so much stuff into his cell. He's a regular Picasso. Yeah. And through Venom's super memory back at Eddie's apartment, he is able to violently scribble down everything that he saw in Eddie's eyes and actually finds out where the so bodies the are detective, buried. Detective Venom comes up and solves the case on his own and tries to lead Eddie to the, the knowledge, but Eddie doesn't get it until no. it's pretty much spelled out for him. It's kind of a funny part, though, but... They find out that apparently he hit all the bodies that everybody couldn't find at Rodeo Beach in Marin, <laughs> which is just a public beach, which I, I, he hit them under the sand. I, we're you led would, to assume you would think that with the tide, <laughs> never, it, like it, 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 he, they would just find it. But I guess they never bothered to check. And not only did he hide one, he hit all of them. He hit a lot of bodies all of there, them. but and then I he don't know carved if... where they were on the wall of his cell. He gives you anything. You let us know. I, I think he was giving anybody everything. <laughs> I mean, it didn't take a genius to solve it. Maybe spend 10 minutes in his cell. Like, you know, to have him take him out and just be like, okay, okay. 
We just got to find what looks like this. What looks like this? Because <laughs> it's like it shows the rocks at the beach too, and a venom like matches it up. And I go, it looks. These guys like, are so stupid. How do they not figure this out? It looks like. Uh, to be fair, it looks like he didn't hide them on the beach. It looks like he hid them on a nearby hill of dunes and sand. That still have dunes and sand. Yeah. True. <laughs> Venom has cracked the case. The bodies have been found. Cletus Cassidy, guilty as shit. Yes. Um, they, so guilty. So guilty that the governor of California reinstates the death penalty just for him, and they are planning on executing him Friday night, basically. You thought Newsom was a liberal <laughs> pussy. Look at him now. <laughs> Willing to kill this fictional man. Yeah, Cletus Cassidy's very upset that Eddie, who's an investigative journalist, investigated and and found his bodies that he he killed these people but he feels like he's been victimized personally by eddie brock venom's getting fed up with eddie though he's he's pussing out on like killing snacking on bad guys he's just telling venom no let's just eat chickens and chocolate just stanley has a cameo in this on, on a magazine, magazine cover. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Chen's shop. Mrs. Yeah. Chen comes back. She's just Eddie's friend who runs a bodega in San Francisco. And she knows about Venom because he just she just saw him eat someone at the end of the first movie. He protects the shop, I guess, as well. Yes. In exchange for chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we've explained, this movie wears it like a badge. Yes. Like just how silly and campy this all is. Yes. And they lean into that heavily from the first movie because the first movie tried taking itself a lot seriously a mm -hmm. lot more seriously than this one does but a lot of people enjoyed the humor and like goofiness that that one brought yeah. every now and then and that's just all this one is now yeah and for that i think it gets a lot of props from me because it's just it just makes it way more entertaining and also, this one's nice and short, too. Like yes. <laughs> this is like an hour and 40. No, this is like 90-minute movie. Oh, really? Like, without credits, this is, nice. this is a good 90-minute like, time and killer. Quick in and out. Get it done. Yeah, you're welcome. Cletus Cassidy is now going to be executed, and he blames Eddie Brock. Emphasizes this by inviting him to his execution via a postcard yes. that he wrote down his sad boy life backstory on it. And it's told to us in very Tim Burton -y storyboard kind of red, animation. Red drawing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that part that kind of yeah. adds to like the movie's quirky, weird charm. He was revived at birth because he died. Yes. And then he was abused by his family. So he murdered both his grandmother and mother. Yes. He pushed his grandma down the stairs and then he threw... <laughs> What did he do? He throw a toaster in his, his mom's, mom's, mom's bath shower or whatever. Yeah. He got uh, thrown into what's this place called? It's an orphanage or like a Saint, Saint Cecilia's home for little boys or something like that. <laughs> Saint, I don't fucking yeah, know. Yeah. Saint Estes or whatever. And that's where he meets little kid Shriek and yeah. they like fall in love with each other because she, yes. they protected each other. Yes. He just feels betrayed by Eddie, especially when you realize what he really wanted by the end of the movie, which yeah. is, you know, just again, really silly. Uh, he goes to say bye to him, maybe get anything he can out of him before he leaves. Cause he is going to be executed that night. Yes. Eddie goes, Cletus says, I hate you. I wish all the worst things imaginable on you. You're like a cancer and you cause everyone around you misery, especially with the fact that you killed your mother just by being born. Venom takes major offense to this to defend Eddie's honor, and he attacks Cletus Cassidy in his cell, but gets Eddie a little too close to Cletus Cassidy, and Cletus Cassidy fucking bites Eddie. Bites Eddie's finger. He bites his he bites his hand. Yes. And gets some of his blood. Yes. Is that how it no. has happened in the no. comics? No. <laughs> how? Because I know like they were cellmates in the comics, and he he took his blood. Essentially, a lot of times this also Venom recreates by uh cellular cellular mitosis he just clones like he just essentially spawns another symbiote okay and that that particular symbiote managed to bond with cletus cassidy got it okay yeah, well so that, that that's that's also part of it um i think the original one is something with the blood i gotta i gotta again go back and read it again like like i remember some of this but i don't know 100 percent. okay and he calls him out immediately he's just like what was that? That was not blood. <laughs> and yeah. Eddie leaves and gets pissed at Venom. He gets pissed. They have a fight and they break up. Yes. Because <laughs> Venom calls him out and says, 
I made you where you're at today. Before I met you, you were a total loser. I helped you get that back on still, get still you, is. <laughs> I helped you get your life back on track. I helped you get the scoop on Cassidy. You 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 have re your career is reignited thanks to me. And I am getting no credit. You're just getting pissed off at me the whole time. Yes. And I'm just like, well, yeah, because you're kind of a whiny toddler screaming in his ear like half the time, too. Yes. I get Venom did that from a place of love, but I would be pissed too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they both inadvertently cause lots of people to die now. <laughs> it's a lot of people are dead now. And Venom leaves him. He leaves him and starts jumping from body to body, uh, just kind of like traveling through the city. Hanging which, out. Which makes me think, is he killing these people? Yes. By jumping from body I'm to body. Assuming they, they pass out and die at the end. Yeah. Oh, dude. Because in that first movie, when they're experimenting on like the homeless people. Yeah. Like the symbiotes have the power to just like kill their host. Yes. If they just can't bond with them. Yes. So I'm wondering, just like he's jumping from person to person. Is he killing these people? I think he is. Yeah. <laughs> I think Venom's just taking I think Venom's just absorbing their life force until the body just breaks down. That's dark, man. Like an angry, scorned girlfriend. Venom not only breaks the TV, he breaks his motorcycle too. Yes. <laughs> Cut to Cletus Cassidy's execution. I always thought this was a genius concept. The Carnage's first emergence is during an attempted execution of Cletus Cassidy. Sure. Goes on a rampage through San Quentin. Mm -hmm. He looks good. He looks all right. Sounds sounds like a Velociraptor, <laughs> but you know, from Jurassic Park. Velociraptor sound effects aside, I like his roar. Yeah. He's got a good roar. That sounded amazing in the theater. It's fun. I, I, that, that's, that's kind mm. of the way I would describe it. It's Carnage taking on an entire prison. Yeah. He, he gets out. It, it, it feels, I, I don't really have a comment. It just feels like exactly like what would happen. Yeah, you get a sense of his like raw power and strength in this too. Yes. And his sadicism. I do think their designs, like their contrasting designs, Venom and Carnage, add a lot of character to them. Sure. Whereas Venom has like this smoothness to his exterior. Yeah. Whereas Carnage's exterior just kind of looks like a skinned, flayed body. Yes. And it, it, he's got this gross stickiness to it. It's it kind of giving like an inbred quality off. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I really appreciate it, especially when he like his... Um, like when the tentacles... Whenever the tentacles come out of his back, there's stringy slime all over them. An infected body turned inside out almost. Yes. Kind of reminded me of when Frank comes back in Hellraiser minus the gore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> it's disgusting, but I love it. He is yeah. a gross resident evil monster. Yes. Essentially. When they take over their hosts, there's a difference. Like whenever Venom takes over Eddie, he kind of forms around him gracefully and protectively. Yeah. But when Carnage comes out, he just twists like Cletus's body like in and out of shape and whatnot. It kind of reminded me of John Carpenter's The Thing sure. a little bit. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. Like there's some creepy imagery from how he transforms because he just twists his face like out of like out of form and everything. Like yes. you can tell he just doesn't care about the human inside him. Yeah. Um, so that adds a lot of personality to it. When the cop confronts Woody Harrelson outside of uh, Eddie Brock's apartment and he's like, yeah. put your hands up. He's like, which hands? And then he just slowly forms. It looks really creepy. Eddie Brock's found out that Cletus has escaped. Venom is body hopping. I guess it's Halloween because like he goes well, to a, he goes to a rave. He goes to a costume rave, like yeah. a costume party rave. Everybody's dressed up. Thank you. One person. Yeah. <laughs> he addresses the crowd like he's feeling really good about himself. Just like Eddie wanted to hide me, but you all love me. And it's just like, I am out of the Eddie closet. There you go. <laughs> wow, great. Yeah, I wonder if this movie will go down in history as a beloved LGBTQ plus community well, <laughs> favorite, well, much like much like Nightmare 2. Well, I mean, <laughs> the, the way they could have made sure that, you know, all of this would have stayed in, you know, is somebody could have gone out to bed and be like, that's a nice costume. Did your husband give it to you? <laughs> <laughs> just eats that guy's head. Yep. <laughs> One less homophobe. <laughs> This is a cartoon. Yes. You know what you know what you're watching right now, but you never feel insulted watching it because it's so outright ridiculous about everything it's doing. Yep. And a, right, a good way to put it. Yeah, that scene and it just even scenes that don't correlate too much to it, like Shriek and Carnage are sizing each other up at the end fight where he's like, keep your voice down. And she's like, who the fuck you think you're talking to? And they're all yeah. Cletus Cassidy, his get up in this with his blazer and his Hawaiian like button up shirt and the way his hair is yeah. combed, 
I'm sorry. He looks like Biff Tannen. He, he does. He, does <laughs> he look, looks like, he he looks looks like, like <laughs> Biff Tannen from like uh, Back to the Future 1955 era. Yeah. He looks like the old high school bully showed up to the reunion. Yes. That's kind of how his get up. Arose. Remember when I was like <laughs> top? I was a quarterback. I was popular. Yeah. Question. I got four kids with three different women. <laughs> Never once does he question the fact that there's an, an alien slime monster coming out of him. No, nah, it, it, it's all it's all on a normal Tuesday to him. Yeah, he's more than happy. He's out of prison. Converses with Carnage for the first time. Carnage wants nothing but to kill Venom. Yes. Like, that's his goal. Yeah. But Cletus says, I'll make a deal with you. Help me with this, and I know how to find. And what, the- is it, what does he want help with? He needs to find Shriek. He needs to find Shriek. He wants to find Who's his girlfriend. Who's about three miles away? <laughs> what were you saying? He's driving on the Bay Bridge, but he's going to the city, even though he just left the city. He, he stole. He stole the. He stole I, a he convertible. Stole the car in front of the Transamerica Pyramid. I think he stole it on Columbus Avenue, and then now he's driving on the Bay Bridge to San Francisco again. He goes, <laughs> I'm looking for Shriek, and he goes. She. He goes, and Carnage is like, "Oh, I'll help you do that." And he goes, good. And I go, well, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> you you're just were going the wrong way. I didn't <laughs> notice that. That's so funny. I I'm thought a- he was on the Golden Gate. No, no, no. no. I, I think he's on the Bay Bridge. Okay. <laughs> when I thought it was the Golden Gate, I'm just like, okay, he's going toward Marin. But then the very next scene you see him and he pulls up to a gas station that's right under like a BART rail. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no BART up there. <laughs> what the fuck? He finds Shriek. He has uh, Carnage hack into the internet finds out she's alive and being held prisoner at this super secret institution called Ravencroft. Ravencroft. Which, which again, for all we know, is in the East Bay somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> it, it, Ravencroft is, exists, like I said, but it's in New York. New York In the City. comics, yeah. Well, not New York City. It's like uh, one of the upstate New upstate York Upstate New York. Yeah. It's up in Albany or some Or shit. like West New York. I don't know. Near Buffalo. I don't fucking remember where it is, but it's in New York. Yeah. We're dealing with uh, supernatural humans. Carnage shows up and breaks her out. And I e- gotta easily, give, easily. Yeah, I got to give props to Marco Beltrami's score in this because I do think like Cletus's oh. theme is like really creepy, especially yeah. when he's he's revealing his symbiote to Shriek, who's more than happy to see him. Yeah. And, you know, busts her cell open. It's definitely a stretch, but because yeah. it's Woody and a, cl- a crazy love interest, it, uh, I always kind of saw it as a fun reference to natural born killers. Yeah, 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 that's that. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Uh, Naomi Harris also, my favorite movie she's in is 28 Days Later, and none of Selena is in this character at all, so it's a shame. Oh, no, she leans into the crazy, too. Yeah. She's just acting like a cartoon the whole movie. Yes. And they, they, it's fun seeing them act crazy together. Yes. It would have been amazing if it was Juliette Lewis. <laughs> yeah, that would have been kind of crazy to see. Well, it turns out, because Shriek has, like, supersonic, like, screaming abilities. Yes. That is not good for the symbiotes who are very, very weakened to by sound and fire to high pitched frequencies. Yes. And fire. So this might not be a match made in heaven, <laughs> unfortunately, but they are still two superpowered freaks Hanging that, love, out. that love each other. Eddie asks Anne to go look for Venom because they broke up, but Eddie is being held in uh, by the police. Venom has taken over Mrs. Chen. <laughs> Venom has gone around and just fucked around. He, he's been he's been inside multiple people, and now he wants to come crawling back to Eddie. Not really. Not though. really. He he's... wants an apology. So then Venom goes inside Anne, who uh, breaks Eddie out of the prison, police, out of out of the police precinct. Yes. Because at this point, Eddie knows, uh, hearing the reports, just like, oh, there's monsters about it. He's like, yes. oh, no, now I know what's going on. Yes. I need Venom. We need each other. We're the only ones who can stop this. Uh, they agree to help after Eddie apologizes to Venom. and In they, a very half-assed apology. In a very <laughs> half-assed apology. <laughs> anyway, let, okay, so let's just cut to can we just cut to the church because like all of this in the middle doesn't matter let's just go to the church yeah basically Shriek, Anne gets kidnapped by Anne venom gets, and and shriek no and Anne gets kidnapped by carnage and shriek oh shit i'm fucking this up <laughs> Anne gets kidnapped by carnage and shriek they're in a church they and they're want because good. they're in grace cathedral which yes. is a real church in san francisco yes and they want to get married Again, this is how silly this movie is. They hold a a father, a priest captive to marry them together. They kidnap the cop because it's revealed that that cop was the one that shot uh, Shriek in the eye. 
when she tried to escape why, and why murder him. Why is she alive? Escape and murder him. <laughs> why is she? He shot her like dead in the face. Yes. In the eye. Like Mo Green special. Godfather. <laughs> straight in the eye. And she is alive. <laughs> and that's what you're questioning in this movie? Yes. Okay. Yep. He kicks down the door and Carnage reveals himself and Eddie and Venom bitches out immediately because that is a red one. This is much worse than I thought. Apparently, and we never learn why, I guess just it's just based on like on the hierarchy. Apparently, the red symbiotes are more dangerous or they're just stronger. More they're just stronger, more powerful. Yeah. And during the fight, like you can tell he's just got more raw power to him. Yeah, they fight. And that's the big climactic finale that, you know, the whole movie basically just leads up to. It's a good fight, though. I have a lot they of fun good, watching they have this. Swinging back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Venom gets fucked up. Shriek tries to defend her husband by, you know, screaming at Venom. But Carnage is uh, clearly affected by that, too. Gets hit by the sound wave. Gets hit by the sound wave and just, just knocks Shriek back, and which angers Cletus. Because he's like, no, my wife. How could you? My wife. And Car <laughs> Carnage apparently is just like, I don't fucking care. Shut up. <laughs> which is kind of an interesting twist on the comic is just like, yeah. they're not symbiotic. He takes Anne and he's like, you're going to watch her die. And he attempts to eat Anne, but not before carnage assaults shriek just for being annoying, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I so Venom goes, I haven't like has an idea to, to get carnage to after not he saves Anne. Yeah, he does save Anne, which I do like how he never gets, he doesn't get the girl in the end. He has to live with the consequences of his actions. Yes. But this to me seemed like, especially if you know the first movie, this to me seemed like he has finally redeemed himself. He is saving her and taking and possibly going to die from it. Yeah. So I appreciated that. But it's not looking good for Venom right now. Carnage yes. is now like the size of a house taking over this church. Like everything, like all his tentacles are wrapped around the church, essentially. And Venom looks over and sees Shriek get now conscious getting up. And Eddie says, oh, we need something like fire. And Venom says, or we need sound. Looks at Carnage, looks at Shriek. And then bitch slap Shriek off the top of the bell tower <laughs> <laughs> into the bell into the bell. Yeah. <laughs> and she falls to her death, but not before letting out a one more shriek. One more shriek, causing both symbiotes on both men to just collapse and fall and just crumble the bell tower. Yes. Like it's a good climactic. Everybody falls from the high place that they were having their climactic showdown. Yes. On top of Shriek somehow survives hitting the floor, but you know, the, the bell falls <laughs> the on her bell falls on her and crushes her and hits with a boom sound. Boom. It's like when that bitch got hit in final destination with the, uh, the engine block from the, the, when she, she gets hit with the engine block for it's like, boom. <laughs> and she goes, uh. yes, but PG 13 for this. Remember? Yes. <laughs> Eddie is saved. Thanks to Dr. Dan and Anne. Dan and Anne. Really? Dan and Ann. Dan yeah. and Ann. <laughs> Dr. For, Dan they, and they make, Ann. A, they make a tech deck ramp with their arms for Venom to go down and then up into Eddie again. And up into Eddie as and Eddie's falling the, to his absorb the as fall. Eddie, Yeah, yeah. So he can bond with him right before he hits the floor. Mm -hmm. Carni uh, Cletus is not so lucky. He and Carnage get separated. Cletus hits the floor. He's very injured. And so does Carnage. Venom walks over to Carnage and just gobbles him up. And eats the eats the symbiote himself. Yeah. Yes, yes. He he takes back essentially what he created. He picks up Cletus and it's over for him. This is kind of a good scene though. But it doesn't make any sense. Yes. Because Cletus just is like, it doesn't matter if I have a monster, but you know what I really wanted? And Eddie comes out and says, What did you want, Cletus? Cletus just says, I just wanted your friendship. I just wanted your friendship. Eddie goes. Cletus, I'm sorry. Venom forms and drops the one F-bomb in the movie and eats his fucking head. Yes. <laughs> He's dead. So, he chucks his body down to Cletus Cassidy <laughs> is dead. Cletus, he, he, yeah, he dies in this movie. Yes, he's he did dead. Not, he is, he, his uh, reign of carnage was short-lived. Yes. That is a good part, though. There was only some carnage. <laughs> Eddie has to go on the run. Yes. And he parts ways with Anne and Dr. Dan. He and Venom are back together, all happy. The day is saved. The bad guys are fucking toast. They they flee to Mexico and decide, well, we're just going to be a cool vigilante now because we've kind of ruined our lives. In the San lethal protector. <laughs> and that's where the movie ends.
That's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. I don't this, know. this has been the most disjointed one to listen to, hasn't it, has it, it, listeners? Is it's it just, because I am in charge of talking about I it? I would say, <laughs> no, I just think it's like, it's like, oh yeah, this happens and this happens and this happens and people are just like, is there context to this? Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> this is just happening. This is just how the movie works. If we go on a location tour for this movie, all we have to do is go to Palace of Fine Arts and we're halfway done. Yeah, we're pretty much done. They, they go to that place more than once. <laughs> it's where they drop the chickens off. It's like baby's first action superhero movie. That's the best way I can describe <laughs> it. It's, it's, such, it's such a level where you don't even need like any sort of development at all. The motivations, like I told Nick when I was watching it again, are a little, they get a little muddled in my opinion. Uh, about you know why people are doing things and and that and i think that's where the movie suffers if that makes sense like i don't quite understand what some people really want which people though what does eddie want eddie wants his career back but he's not really working for it at all no, not really. So he's so that's not what he wants. So but he that's doesn't where, want that. But that's where the conflict comes in of Venom saying, it, you didn't do this on your own. I, I, I helped make you who you are now today. You were nothing before I came yes, along. Yes, and I understand that. But so Eddie doesn't actually really want his career. So I'm unsure of act, what he actually wants. Because if he did, he's, it's not hard working, he's not working for it. He's Tom just Hardy, kind of fucking around. As fun as Tom Hardy is in the movie, yeah, he looks... You you brought up a good point. He very much plays Eddie Brock as he's very... He's just apathetic. He doesn't give a fuck about anything. anything. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so I don't know what he wants. Even Carnage, Cleese Cassidy, I kind of get what he wants, but then I also don't get what he wants. But, so maybe that's just like... Well, supposed he's, to be, just, he's just crazy. Well, I mean, kind of, kind of yes and no, but everyone has their motivations, but... I don't know. I, I think it gets a little muddled like that. Even even the cop, the cop. I go. I don't know what this guy wants either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, uh, what does he want? Like, I keep forgetting he's in the movie. Yeah, I go. I go. He wants to solve the case, but he's not doing a whole bunch. No, he's just hounding Eddie like the whole movie. Yeah. Why are you bothering this guy? I know you think he did something, which he did, but <laughs> it, it, you know, maybe you should do your own thing, and you know, maybe do a little bit of investigations. It's not hard. Because even he didn't even know where they went to school, remember? Or like that that Saint 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 whatever Saint Estes Saint. Yeah. They, I go. I go. They carve their initials on a fucking tree there. CK did you guys do any investigation at all? <laughs> yeah. Did you not do any investigation at all? No. Eddie had to do that for them. They, Eddie did it all for them. And I go. Why are you guys upset? You didn't do anything. Again, most incompetent police force. <laughs> These are the same people that tried to bring Ted Bundy down. No wonder he kept killing people. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, so overall, <laughs> if you want a movie that just like turn your brain off, just super simple, basic superhero movie, man, this is this is probably top tier of that for you, for, for me, uh, I would say. Okay. There, there's I'm some watchability to you that. You don't take it seriously. No, I'm glad at, for at that. And I'll say this. At least everyone does a good job in it. As weird as Tom Hardy plays this, he does a good job. Uh, Woody Harrelson does great. He's fun. So he's a lot of fun. It, it, you know, those two do well, and that's really all that matters. Nobody else really matters. Not really. No, they're the most they're, they're the most uh, memorable at least, parts. At, of the movie. at least they're not phoning it in. That's the best. That's the best place I can describe it. I would like to see a little bit more of Naomi Harris doing stuff, but you know what? Mm -hmm. Well, that's she's fun. That. Too. She's fun too, though. Yep. I, it's a big com for me. It's a big combination of everything I'm into from movies like giant alien monsters wreaking yes. havoc, fighting each other, causing collateral damage, <laughs> big dumb action, superhero storylines. It's it, it leans into the wackiness of the first one. It amps it up to ten, and it it, it turned. I get why it turned a lot of people off, but I I fell in love with its junk food brainlessness. I really did because it loves itself and its dumbness that makes me love it more now if you know us generally you, sh you would know that nathan digs up trivia and facts on said movie we're talking about and writes them down comes up with some jokes including a what a story mark which he to which he personally thinks is the most cra is the craziest fact about the movie he could find and he has me read them and I have no prior knowledge of what they are. So I read them for the first time. Today, the tables have turned because this is a movie I really wanted to do for April Fool's because I love it and he tolerates me, so he tolerates it. I have found facts and trivia on this movie and written a what a story mark. He has not seen them. 
and he is about to read them for you now. Fact number one. Venom 2 was released on October 1st, 2021, and grossed $214 million domestically while in theaters, placing it at number 206 on the all-time domestic box office list? Is it? Okay. Some of its competition in the fall of 2021 included No Time to Die, the one where he dies, oops, <laughs> Danae Villeneuve's Dune, Part 1, Villeneuve? Villeneuve? How do you say that? Danae, Danae Villeneuve? Villeneuve? I always thought it was Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Villeneuve's Dune, Part 1, The Spice of Popeye's Spicy Chicken Sandwich Must Flow, I'm Hungry. <laughs> And finally, Halloween Kills, starring James Jude Courtney as action villain Michael Myers, murdering a group of firefighters with a Halligan bar simply because he didn't like that they were doing their jobs. Of 2021, it was the eighth highest grossing... Venom was? Ven yes, it was. It made worldwide a little over 500 million. Really? At the box office. But can you guess what number one was of 2021? Oh, oh, it's, it's, uh, no way home. It's no, yeah, it's, it's no way home. Yeah, yeah. It's no way home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was trying to remember. I was like, is it a Marvel? Yeah, that would make sense. Fact number two, filming in San Francisco took place during the same time that another tent pole action sci-fi sequel is being filmed in the same city, leading to Tom Hardy actually serving as a quick background extra during one of the scenes of the said film. If you really want to try to see if you can find him in the background, that is a better excuse for watching the Matrix Resurrections than for any other reason alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I, I was working next to where they were filming all the time for the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. interesting. Do you know that part in Venom where he's in Koi Tower? Yes. And those helicopters are going, are yes. flying past. Those yep. are real helicopters and they were there. Those helicopters are for the filming of Matrix Resurrections. Yes. And Andy Serkis was just like, oh, no, we can play it off. <laughs> production value, production value. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. While taking a break from filming Venom, he was palling around with uh, Jessica Henwick, who's yeah. in the Matrix 4, and he <laughs> he just got to be a background extra for one of the scenes they were shooting. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe Venom was like, oh my god, it's Neo! <laughs> <laughs> Fact number three. The filmmakers were originally considering the subtitle, Love Will Tear Us Apart, instead of Let There Be Carnage which would have emphasized the volatile love interest between Eddie and Venom. It is also a reference to the Joy Division song, which clearly would have been the worst thing to happen to Joy Division since 1980. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, shit on Ian Curtis like that. I uh, didn't. I know, I know. I I'm not. I, I know. I'm just, it's a fact. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> they would reform and form new order. <laughs> Oh, God, that, that's funny. So they were thinking love will tear us apart because so it can emphasize the relationship between the two of them. Yo, Sony's a bunch of sad boys. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it is. He's like, it's like somebody goes, let's use the Joy Division song. Why? Why would you tear? Why would you choose that? Been up all night listening to them. Getting in the mood. <laughs> Maybe that's what Tom Hardy was doing to get himself in the mood for. Uh, Eddie Brock, <laughs> just like sad loser. <laughs> just listen to a bunch of sad losers. Just, Joy just Division fucking song. Joy Division the entire time. <laughs> what about New Order? No, no, too happy. <laughs> no, it's too upbeat. Too upbeat. Fact number four. Despite sounding like a generic video game villain, Carnage is actually voiced by Woody Harrelson himself, having been convinced by director Andy Serkis after he was reluctant to do so. Before this, the last film Woody Harrelson voice acted in was 2013's Free Birds, an animated feature about a couple of talking turkeys who go back in time to stop Thanksgiving from becoming about eating turkeys. No real joke here. I just think we should really consider this making a Thanksgiving tradition watch. <laughs> okay. Have you heard of this movie? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, Woody Harrelson voices like a big turkey and he goes to Owen Wilson turkey and says... You there, you're my friend. I have a time machine. We're going to go back to the Pilgrim days and make Thanksgiving. We're going to stop Thanksgiving. We're going to stop the mating turkeys. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's Lord. just, I haven't seen it in years, but I just remembered like, oh yeah, there's, a, there's another Thanksgiving movie for you. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we are now on to the what a story, Mark. This is the most outlandish fact about the, don't read it. Don't you read it. I wasn't going don't to it. Don't you fucking read it. This is the most outlandish fact I could find about the movie. And Nathan has to read it with no prior knowledge of it. And he is going to rate it for me out of five marks. 
And it is a reference to another fantastic film set in San Francisco, The Room, <laughs> starring... <laughs> What a story, Mark. The most outrageous fact about this movie, at least to me personally, is the fact that I got this chump reading this to actually see it with me in theaters, in IMAX no less. No less. He knew damn well this isn't the kind of shit he would waste his time on. He must really love me, and you better believe this lanky ass will be there for IMAX for Venom 3 this November with me. Long live Spony's Spider-Man-less Spider-Man universe. Well, that's uh, that's uh, you get a half a mark on that. You don't even get. I don't even fuck it. You get half a mark. You wait to bomb. Wait to bomb your one chance. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Well, now we're on to Nathan's bit. Because what I'm is sick. your what is your bit? This is what I want to see uh, in Venom Three. Cancelled. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it. All right. What would you like to see in Venom Three, Nick? Venom Three is taking on the cartel since he's in Mexico now, <laughs> and they have finally decided to unpussify themselves, make it R-rated, and he just—it's Rambo: Last Blood, but with Venom. He goes after the cartel, starts eating heads. Like Sicario. <laughs> no, Sicario too. Sicario too, oh God. <laughs> When's Beyond the Spider-Verse coming out? I Probably never. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Probably like five years. <laughs> oh, man. We'll be big by then. Yep. <laughs> Just watch. Yeah. <laughs> what would you rate this? 45, <laughs> I'm going to give this. It, it at least knows what it is. It, it's exactly doesn't pretend and for that i give it some credit 84 84 i love this movie so how, how i what, love this i love this junk food ass movie it's it's so entertaining to me i get a lot of enjoyment watching it watching it just the, it, from the action the performances the overall just zaniness of it all it it really clicked with me when i saw it and yep. it's become one of my favorites so enjoy what you enjoy is what i is all i have to say about that if you are in a similar boat. You like the Venom movies. They're not just guilty pleasures for you. And it just flaunt it, man. Like, own no, it. keep it to yourself. Be ashamed. Don't do you listen see what, to, do you see what, to look this, what happened? <laughs> what do you mean? Look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, you're here by your own will. You made the choice to come I'm here. I did not make you desk. do anything. <laughs> I did not make you do shit. <laughs> but, all no, right. but no, in all seriousness, you have your favorites. You love your favorites. Enjoy your favorite movies. No one can take that away from you. No one can. That's all I really have to say. You got to do the math here, too. Okay. 45 and 84. 64.5. 64.5. For Venom, let there be carnage. That's fair. It's my turn now okay. to be a hypothetical bouncer oh, outside of a we're club. we're back to the club. Uh, now I'm trying to get in. Now you are trying to get Nick in. Nick was so mad they didn't get in a bunch of times that he went and started <laughs> his own club with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> What was in your club? Not those things. <laughs> oh, yeah? Why did I want to go to your club? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm basically going to ask a movie trivia question to Nathan. If he answers it to my liking, there's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on what I like. So it's a very uh, subjective yes or uh, question and answer. Yep. Give me Tom Hardy's worst performance. Uh, Dunkirk. Really? <laughs> See, because he doesn't do it, he just doesn't say much. <laughs> he just, uh, he, he, you know, listen, he does okay for that movie. I think he does pretty well. You know, he does great in Mad Max and everything. He does great in some other ones. But I was like, he's got his face covered the whole movie. He doesn't really do anything. Okay. Okay. All right. Come enjoy some blackjack and hookers. <laughs> someone doesn't like Chris Nolan. <laughs> And I actually someone, like, I'm okay with Chris Nolan. Just Dunkirk, I just don't think Tom Hardy's in it. Uh, he's he's in it for, he's just in the plane, right? At, from what I remember, yeah, he's, um, he's got the mask on and he just says like things occasionally, like I'm running out of fuel. He's a fighter pilot. Bang, he's bang, bang. Like he's important to what's going on. Yeah. But you're right. I get it. He doesn't really do much. Yeah. Besides that. Thank you for listening to the one and a half white guys podcast or more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies for long. Be sure to follow us, rate us and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast on TikTok at one and a half white guys. And now on our YouTube, which is hopefully we're going to be watching this at one and a half white guys and be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we mostly sort of kind of talk about the movie better wait how'd you do that is that yeah you just hold this. that's what that does <laughs>
because it's sitting here forever trying to figure out what that does. I've been playing with it for fucking hours on our recordings, different one. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I would pat you on the head if I could. Right? <laughs> All right, let's go back here. God, that's see, yeah, that that's good. Okay, yeah, absolutely, that makes it a little bit easier.